Hello everyone, Only Draven here again, and today we're doing another tutorial in Minecraft All the Mods 8. Today we're going to be doing an introduction to the Hostile Neural Networks mod. Now, if you're familiar with the Deep Mob Learning mod, uh, this one's pretty much the same thing but updated. Uh, so it works a little bit differently than Deep Mob Learning did, but the overall concept is the same. So we're going to kind of cover the changes and how to get started. Now, uh, if you find this video helpful and you like it, please be sure to click like. But most importantly, please remember to hit that subscribe button, so that way you can see all my videos and tutorials as they come out. Alrighty. So there's a few things that we're going to need to get started. First, you're going to need a deep learner. That is going to be four obsidian blocks, one redstone, one glass pane, and three redstone repeaters. Next, you're going to make model framework. And that's going to be four clay balls, one gold ingot, two redstone, a smooth stone, and a redstone repeater. You are going to use multiple of these. Uh, if you try to do all of the different models, you're probably looking at least 20 to 25. Next are prediction matrices. And that is going to be four glass pane, an iron ingot, a clay ball, and a gold ingot. And you are going to make a ton of these if you're going to put any serious time into this mod. Next is the simulation chamber, which is going to be two lapis, two ender pearl, a glass pane, an obsidian block, and a redstone comparator. And last is going to be a loot fabricator, which is going to be two gold ingots, two diamond, a netherite ingot, an obsidian block, and a redstone comparator. Okay, so these are the basic things you need, majority of the things you need, in order to really dive into this mod. So let's go ahead and grab the majority of those things. Okay, now to get started completely, um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to make, I'll show you here, there are different what are called data models. And if you look under hostile in the JEI, you're going to see there's a piglitch, pigs. Uh, helmet crabs, snow golem, hoglins, vindicator, all sorts of mobs that are available in the game. From twilight lich data model, all the way to polar bears and even spiders. So, to use this to its fullest, you're going to make a data model of each type of monster. Now, it used to be that you could, a different recipe was needed to make each individual one. That's how it worked in deep mob learning. But in Hostile Neural Network, they've changed that process. So now all you have to do is right click with your model framework on the monster you're trying to sync it to. So let's just say, for example, I'm trying to make a zombie. Okay? Now it's, he may die here in the light, in the flame, but we're just going to put it on here for a second. So here we have a zombie. He's dying, but that's okay. He's given that as an example. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically right click with this model framework that I've made. And you'll see that now it's changed to a successfully constructed zombie data model. And it's cool to make a little 3D in your court, in your uh, hand there, a little cool hologram, which is a nice addition, a little extra visual for this mod now. And now that I have this, now that I have a zombie data model, what I want to do is right-click with my deep learner in my hand, and I'm going to take that data model and I'm going to put it inside. This is going to give me some information on the data model that I have in there. Uh, so there's variants, husks. These are things that would count different monsters you can kill to level this up. Now, because I've only killed one, okay, it's in faulty tier. Faulty tier is the base tier that your data model is going to be in when you first get it created. And as it says here, you can upgrade it to basic by killing six more zombies. So you need to kill those zombies while having this deep learner with that data model in it in your inventory. So we're going to go ahead and grab a sword here, and we're going to smack a couple zombies until we get this to basic level. And kill them hopefully before the fire. So there's one. Oops, set that back down again. Kill him. Kill him. him. And at any time, you can hold your deep learner in your hand, and if you look in the upper left corner, it's going to show you that there's faulty model two remaining to get to the next level. So I got to fight two more. So one, 
Oh, I got a quest. <laughs> all right, so there we go. Gather up all this trash that I don't need anymore that fell on the ground. All right, so now that I've done that, we look at our basic data model. You'll see that now it's in a basic level. And basic level is where you want it to be. Now, you can go and continue to kill zombies, leveling this up. Twelve more will take it to advanced, then there's superior, and then the top one is going to be self-aware. And the goal is to get it to the top level self-aware, uh, so that way you get the most benefit out of your data model. But you don't have to level it manually after you get it to basic. That's where our next components are going to come into play. Now, I'm going to put down the loot fabricator and the simulation chamber that we built earlier. Now, they do need an RF power source to work. Um, I'm just using a creative energy battery with some energy pipes. But any power source that produces RF power will work. So generators, reactors, windmills, solar, anything will work. Although I will say these are power hogs. They're going to use a lot of power to work. So we want to look at the simulation chamber. As we can see, it's charging up now. It has a huge amount of power storage in it because it takes a lot to run. Now, it's telling us to insert a data model inside. So let's go ahead and open up our deep learner and take that data model back out again. And now we're going to go ahead and set it up here in this little box up to the left. So now it's giving us the same kind of information. So this is a zombie is the target. It's currently at basic level. If you look here, it says 048 data collected. Model accuracy is 5%. We're going to talk about what that means in a moment. But it says that this machine cannot begin its simulation without some prediction matrices. That's these things we made here. This is why I said you're going to want a bunch of them. You're going to place those inside, and what this is going to do is it's going to run a simulation using one of these production matrices as if you were going to kill a zombie. It's running a simulation. It's basically fighting a zombie for you. And as it does that, it's going to level up your data model for you. Now, because it's going through simulations, remember we only needed 12 to get to the next level when we looked at it down here in our deep learner? Well, it needs 48 simulations to get to the next level. So it takes a little bit longer, but you don't actually have to go out and find the monsters or kill anything. Now, every time that this runs a simulation, it's going to produce a generalized prediction. Now, there are three different types. If we look over here, you can see that there is, a, let's see, we've got the generalized, sorry, four types. There's a generalized overworld prediction, nether prediction, ender prediction, and the way down here, twilight prediction. And these are going to be produced based on the type of mob. So if it's a mob that you would get in the nether, it's going to give nether predictions. Something you fight in the end, ender predictions, and something in the twilight forest is going to give you twilight predictions. These can be used for all sorts of different recipes to produce different items that you may use. For example, you can combine that with a flint and a stick to get a bunch of arrows. Four of them with a rotten flesh will give you eight iron. So they themselves are a great, great benefit. But what we're really looking for is this right here, a zombie prediction. So right now it says I have a 7.12% chance on a successful simulation to get one of these. That percentage will increase the higher level that my data model gets. Now, the zombie prediction itself, the reason we want that, is using the loot fabricator. So the loot fabricator takes these predictions, and it allows you to trade them into different items. So a zombie prediction, I can trade it. One of those will give me 64 rotten flesh, or 8 iron ingots, 16 carrots, 16 potatoes, or 2 zombie hearts. And if I go ahead and click on... Rotten Flesh, you'll see it's going to convert that in. Now, when I put another one in there, it's going to automatically start making Rotten Flesh again. Because that's what I have it set as now. You can quickly just click on the Rotten Flesh up at the top if, that's what, if you don't want that. And it'll stop that conversion and you can choose the new thing that you want to make. So I traded one of those predictions for 64 Rotten Flesh. Each prediction that you can get from different monsters can be traded for different things. For example, a skeleton prediction can be traded for 32 arrows, 24 bones, 4 skeleton skulls, or 2 rib bones. Uh, but then you can get into some really, really useful ones. Uh, let's just see. Uh, what do we got here? We'll grab spider prediction, which can be traded for string, spider eyes, web, fine silk, uh, and chelsere. I'm going to hope I'm saying that right. Don't hold me to that. Uh, but it can be traded for a lot of different things. And so um, 
it's awesome as a way to get a hold of items that maybe you don't want to go out and farm manually. This is an Enderman prediction. One of my favorite ones to get a hold of as quickly as possible. Because I can trade that for 16 Ender Pearls. And that's one of the fastest ways to get a hold of Ender Pearls, especially since this entire process we're looking at can be very easily automated. If you run prediction matrices into this using, say, a hopper or, a, say, a chest full of them using a pipe leading into it, an item pipe, you can then auto-feed your production matrices inside of here. Then you can use another pipe to ex pull the items out. So hypothetically, uh, you could have two pipes. One of them is going to pull out your overworld matter. One's going to pull your predictions. Feed the predictions in here directly. Well, that wasn't smart. Feed the predictions in there directly. And then that's just going to auto-run that. And you can pull it out of that. So very easy to set up. I'll do a tutorial showing that breakdown here in the very near future. Um, but... More than anything else, using hostile neural networks is a great way to get a hold of some harder to get items in the game very, very easily. All you have to do is find the creature you're looking to get, convert your uh, model framework into what the data model that you're looking for, and then basically kill six more creatures of that type. And once you do, it'll be basic, and once it's basic, you can put it in here, and as long as you continue to feed this prediction matrices, it's going to level all the way up to the maximum self-aware, giving you the maximum percentage chance of getting predictions, which you can then trade for items that you need. Uh, which, there's some really hard to get nether stars, wither skulls. There's definitely some harder to get items in there uh, that it's way faster to do it this way than to farm those creatures manually. But that's an introduction to this. Uh, again, hostile neural networks... Uh, formerly in older packs, you've probably seen it out there, but back then it was called uh, Deep Mob Learning. Slightly different than it used to be. A lot of the visuals are the same, such as the machines, the deep learners, and so on. Uh, but I really like the changes they've made to it. I find it's a lot easier than it used to be. So I highly recommend making use of this uh, mod if it's in the pack that you're playing, especially if you're playing all the mods 8. Great way to get some hard stuff to get. Okay? All right, well, that is going to do me for today. Uh, if you have any questions about this tutorial or any of my other tutorials, please be sure to put that down in the comment section, and I'll do my best to get back with you as quickly as I possibly can, as well as any recommendations or suggestions you may have for other tutorials you'd like to see in All the Mods 8. I'm always looking for new ideas. You can also go to my website, onlydraven.com, and at the bottom of the homepage is a place you can submit questions feedback or recommendations directly via email if you'd like to reach out to me directly. But again, happy to get back to you as quickly as I can. While you're on the site, you'll find things like my streaming schedule, links to all my socials, and a bunch of other great resources. So I do recommend checking out the site. But that is going to do me for today. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.